but us is in no position to call out racism in some other country human rights in some other country women's rights in some other country when we know that right in our country all of these abuses you know just last year all of these racial riots that we saw just imagine if the same thing would have happened in afghanistan media would be like in a big uproar the whole world would be in a, in a in a big uproar wall to wall coverage look at this muslims you know no justice you know look at how they're oppressing assalamu alaikum peace be with you wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah brother edi peace uh, be upon you too Inshallah. how are you doing alhamdulillah all praise be to allah you see a lot of alhamdulillah uh, you see a lot of people coming out of the woodwork now it's interesting you had angelina jolie and i don't know if this was a good opportunity for her now because she didn't have an instagram account and now under the pretext of helping the afghan women she's decided to launch her instagram account mm -hmm. and come out because someone wrote her a letter and she's coming out to help the women of afghanistan which seems like a very noble and righteous thing what do you think about that well first and foremost as you mentioned uh, we are not here to support a people the taliban the afghanistan or any government any any you know people we are here to dissect the truth we we want to find out there are so many things going on from all over the world we want to find out the truth from the friction and what does islam teach in all of these uh, chaotic things times that we are going through so when it comes to angelina jolie you know any time anyone uh, wants to help out the people who are helpless we have to say that's a good deed however we have to right away we have to you know ask her a question that yes if you are helping out uh, if you if you want to be the voice of the people the girls in 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 afghanistan what about the voice of the girls in this country in the us what about the women who are going through so much suffering in this country where is your voice for those individuals and then you may be asking you know brother sabil what voice of what people people are free over here in this country there is no suffering right a person may be thinking and saying that so what i would say to them is i would say that uh, you know what about the voice of those women 93000 of them each single year in the usa they are raped in this country by americans on the american women who is going to speak up who is going to be their voice they are 20% of the ladies in this country they they go through incest by their family members by their friends anyone who is going to be their their voice there are 7.8 million spousal abuse cases in this country who is going to be their voice right and the list goes on and on all of this me too movement so we have to be the voice of every person suffering anywhere in the world may that be here may that be france may that be afghanistan or anywhere around the world and that's what islam teaches us and it seems like you're pointing out some hypocrisy here hypocrisy double standard i mean we have to be the voice of every person who does not have a voice but why are we just picking and choosing only the muslim ladies or only the muslim girls because that that gives the impression that only muslim ladies are suffering by the muslims no we have to let people know that this is a human problem and it is prevalent unfortunately in every country in the world so we as humans we as americans and yes that's what islam teaches us as muslims we have to take care of every person poor the needy the hopeless and the homeless anywhere around the world okay so it seems like okay if there's a, a legitimate issue here that we want to go ahead and address we're going to address as a community as a global human community right uh but hold on don't forget about like other where is the right at this time where you have women being oppressed for instance in France mm -hmm. and now they want to go to school but they can't go to school just because now they're wearing the hijab they're imitating Mary the mother of Jesus who Muslims by the way love and revere him and his blessed mother Jesus is one of the greatest messengers sent to mankind Muslims love him and the w Muslim women they're obeying the commands of God almighty and now they're trying to dress in this modest way of dress and now France Marcon whoever the president over there and others mm -hmm. they're s oppressing the women they're not letting them go to school why Angelina Jolie this is your chance to <laughs> shine and help the Muslim women of France would you agree exactly you know i received a post actually and in that post it says uh, you can display it later women cannot go to school or study if they go against what they are ordered to wear and will end up getting arrested then it says which country do you think that is people all over the world they may say it's afghanistan the taliban no that's france 
So where is the freedom of choice of the Muslim ladies in France? So it's important, as I said, Islam is a just faith. Islam takes all humans as equal and we want to stand up for rights, human rights, you know, women's rights, equality of all the humans. So we have to be fair, we have to be just and that's a good message for uh, Angelina Jolie and all the people of conscience. The amount of incest, you know, the destruction of society with the porn industry. I mean, it's just rampant. I mean, homes are being destroyed. The little minds are being taken away, you know. You have also sex slavery. Prostitution. Prostitution. And you have sex slavery happening here in, our lo in, in this country that we love. This is something that look this up this is something the pedophile ring is just you know through the roof you have so many kids being molested pedophile pedophilia is just rampant and I mean when when you hear this like in America that there is sex slavery happening mm -hmm. today I mean it's an industry that's growing why isn't it being talked about this is an action item for you guys just look at the statistics look at this and put it in the comments below but Let's give her, Angelina Jolie, some action items that she can actually, so she can keep, keep it fair and balanced. Yeah, so Brother Eddie, just imagine these statistics that I mentioned, if they were done by the people, by some Muslims, by the Taliban, the world would be in uproar. There would be wall-to-wall -wall coverage in the media. Just imagine if Taliban were raping 93,000 Muslim women in that country. What do you think will happen? There would be invasion after invasion, you know, the poor ladies up there, they're getting raped. No, we have to stand up for any person who's getting, you know, who's getting victimized. So we have to clean up our own country. We love this country and, you know, God wants us to be fair and just and help any person anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. Exposing women as sex objects. It's rampant here. You know, this is abuse at a high, at a really high level. So where are you now to go ahead and correct these wrongs that are happening you follow me and but here's the thing that's when the moral compass is on what are you judging by yeah. it's kind of you think okay the less i wear the more i'm free you know um i have said this many times yes we have to call out any abuse of any rights anywhere in the world but u.s is in no position to call out racism in some other country human rights in some other country women's rights in some other country when we know that right in our country, all of these abuses, you know, just last year, all of these racial riots that we s saw. Just imagine if the same thing would have happened in Afghanistan. Media would be like in a big uproar. The whole world would be in a, in a, in a big uproar. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Look at these Muslims, you know, no justice, you know, look at how they're oppressing blacks and the people of color. So we have to be fair. We cannot be hypocrites. We cannot have double standard. Islam wants us to be fair and just. Yeah. And this uh, Benny Shapiro, he's got a pretty big following and he's also creating some hysteria here because he's using the term Sharia. You say that women have rights that comply with Sharia, that means women don't have rights. He's using the terms Islam. Ah, within the frameworks of Islam, under Sharia law. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm. And he's sending off a message kind of like, okay, now if anything has to do with Sharia or Islam, that now you know, cat catastrophe is about to hit and he's using some really inflammatory language uh, out there. What, what, what do you have to say to some of these things that... Uh we have to be really cautious when anyone brings you any news. The Quran says in chapter 49, Surah Hujrat, verse number 6, that if any disbeliever brings you a news, investigate. So you don't harm people out of ignorance and you don't regret it later on. So if someone is saying, you know, what Sharia says this, Jihad means that we have to take it with a grain of salt. We have to investigate first and foremost. Sharia, for example. Sharia literally it means, uh, you know, the guidance that our Creator has given for humanity so we can live with peace with the Creator, peace with other humans, and live in justice and equality and, and, and unity within all of humanity. So that's what Sharia means. Sharia is not about oppressing women, oppressing uh, people who are, who are non-believers. Sharia gives rights to the women. First and foremost, Taliban are no angels. They're not perfect. If they're doing anything wrong, we have to blame them and not Islam, not Sharia, and definitely not the Quran. So Sharia, actually, the viewers may be surprised to find out, Sharia gave humongous rights to women. You know, the oldest continuous university in the whole world, according to UNESCO, 
it was made by a Muslim lady empowered by the Sharia. Sharia gives Muslim ladies not to be uh, forced into marriage. That's a surprise for Ben Shapiro, I guess. Sharia gives Muslim ladies they can uh, initiate a divorce if they if they want to. They can uh, have their own property. So all of these humongous rights were given by the Sharia. If some country is not implementing it, we have to blame them and not the perfect Sharia that Allah God has given to us. A couple of points I want to mention to Benny Shapiro. I had Rabbi Shapiro on the Dean Show. Oh, really? And he was talking about, we were talking about touching upon the Jewish Sharia that you, many people don't know, you have also Christian Sharia. Yes. You have also mentioned in the Bible, because many people don't know, like Christians and Jews who are Arabic speaking, they don't refer to uh, God as God, they've re referred to God as Allah, and they have the term also Sharia. You have a Sharia mentioned 200 plus times in the, yeah, in the, in the uh, Christian Jewish uh, Bible. And this is confirmed. You can check. I Like I said, I had Rabbi Shapiro and we touched upon this. So you had Moses who was, and this is great because these are educational moments. We hear these things and mm -hmm. people speaking unacademically and they just, you know, going off their whims and their fancies and their desires. A lot of people have this just hate inside their hearts. And they project, project, we don't know what's in their hearts, but you can just guess. They're just angry, uneducated, and now they're using such inflammatory language and words just to like rile people up, maybe get their numbers up, whoever the case. And it's mm. big business, bashing Islam. So again, like you said, we're not supporting any political party or group, but as soon as you bring in Islamic terms and Islam, now, hold on, let's, let's, let's fact check you. So these are the things that we mentioned uh, that they don't know. Sharia, it's in the Bible 200 plus times. Yeah, yeah, Moses, plus. Moses brought Sharia. Yes, if you if you look at Exodus, the Ten Commandments. Yeah, ten if, commandments. You, if you look into the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, chapter twenty, verse number three, the Ten Commandments are the Sharia guidance that Prophet Moses peace be upon him, right? A mighty prophet that he brought from God to the people. So we say that is the guidance, which is a humongously beneficial guidance. You know, worship only one God. Do not make any graven images. Be good to your parents. Do not lie. Do not cheat. Do not murder. All of these are Sharia guidance, we say, that were given by God to Prophet Moses and his people. So yes, Sharia is there in the Old Testament and Sharia guidance is there in the New Testament. And then the last Prophet of God, Muhammad peace be upon him, he was given the complete guidance, the complete Sharia. Using that, humanity can prosper, get united, be moral, be just, and peace would be there between humanity definitely between humanity and the Creator. Yeah, we want to give credit where credit is due. Like for instance, Angelina Jolie, yeah. she was uh, at one point, I believe she was speaking out and creating awareness for the greatest genocide that happened after World War II in Bosnia. You had rape camps set up there and you had the Chetniks and these were people, their priests were blessing their guns. You know, and they were doing this on behalf of Christianity. That's what they thought. But we know that this had nothing to do with Jesus' Christianity, but they are Christian, the Chutneys, and they were doing some uh, really horrific, evil things a uh, in Srebrenica, where many people don't know. You can look this up, and this is a whole different topic, but when people are doing good, we we're going to commend that good. Of course. So this is very important. Now she's coming out. Hopefully she has a good intention. She's trying to do some good. We invite her to come on to the Dean Show, <laughs> and she could talk about this, and even uh, Benny Shapiro. We could bring him on. And let's have a conversation. It's very important to have these conversations to fact check things so people don't walk away thinking like, okay, Sharia, you know, boogeyman coming to get me, Islam backwards, oppresses women, you know, uh, you know, a human being, and we could touch upon this, a human being will make uh, grave errors, make mistakes, a, they might end up, or a group of human beings might end up oppressing a uh, society of people but Islam can never be oppressive it could never be that's the example of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that's the example coming from the Quran you know one example that we can give to Ben Shapiro for example that there is a synagogue in Afghanistan that has been there for literally centuries when Taliban came to power they actually protected it they gave the Jews in Afghanistan a right uh, to openly go and uh, pray in there right so the Jews have the they have the autonomy to have their own culture, their own synagogue, their own freedoms. And that was the example coming from also Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. 
when he went from Makkah to Medina in the very first migration, a big number of Jews up there. So what he did was he made constitution with them called as the Medina Charter. And in the charter it says that the Jews and the Muslims would be one people. We are going to look out for each other. And the Jews, you have your own synagogues, your own culture, your own freedoms, your own punishment system, your own justice system. So they were a, so they were a autonomous Jewish state within the true Islamic state. So that is the gold standard that we need to follow. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, um, I, you know, with all due respect, we have not seen more people losing their ability of freedom of speech now here, like we're experiencing here in the U.S. And now to go ahead and to make those comments, again, without mentioning the things that are going on here. You know, I have so many people who will talk about certain topics and they're getting their YouTube channels, their Facebook channels, everything is just being so taken down, people are losing them. So what happened to freedom of speech here that people are losing and now we're going to criticize someone in another country. What about our home right here? Yeah, yeah. You know, they, I know a few Muslim scholars, when they made some statements about LGBT. They Wait, are you talking about the alphabet movement? <laughs> yes. Okay. So LGBT movement, right? The homosexuality, the lesbian, all of that. Uh, they have been banned from traveling to this country. Mm -hmm. So where is the freedom for those individuals to freely, you know, talk their mind and to have a discussion and, you know, and a fair comments regarding that topic. Yeah. So it's important. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's one. I mean, people have talked about, you know, other topics and they know they cannot say certain words because they will get their videos taken down. You know, so again, this is just a Frangelina Jolie and many others. I mean, this is, we got to keep it all across the board where it's fair and balanced. So one topic, you know, some people, some viewers, they may have in mind when they see the photos uh, and, and also the images coming from there is of the hijab or the modest covering. No one has the right to enforce, people may say, right? Women have, women have the right, whatever they wear. But that's not the case anywhere in the world, anytime in history. As all of us, we know, unrestricted freedoms for any individual never happen in the history of humanity. I mean, a, a society cannot be civilized with unrestricted freedoms. There have to be some restrictions to the freedoms. Yes, freedom should be there. We are all for freedoms. Islam is there for freedoms. You know, in fact, the Quran says in chapter 2, verse number 256, La ikhraha that, that uh, there is no compulsion in faith. People have a freedom to choose their faith. However, it's important. In our country, there is restriction to what we can wear, what we cannot wear. If we disobey those uh, restrictions, there would be arrests, there would be fines. You know, when you go to the airplane, people have always been uh, taken out from the airplanes because uh, they were not wearing something proper. When people go to schools and colleges, they are always a dress code. Uh, when we go to a restaurant, th there is a dress code. So right now, there is a dress code for the, ma uh, for the mask. Many places, you have to wear the mask, which is a mandatory. So Taliban and Afghanistan, if they are enforcing certain uh, laws of modesty, they're not going against anything that all of us all over the world, that we are doing it likewise anyway. Mm -hmm. We may disagree with the methodology that they are using, maybe the aggressive methodology, but the principle, uh, the concept of modesty is there in any country. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, it is their Old Testament. Mm -hmm. In the New Testament, it is, it is there. In the first book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse number 5 and 6, the, the Christian ladies, they are commanded to also cover their hair. So when our Creator has given a dress code for both males and females, we have to cover certain parts of the body. We cannot wear tight clothes. We cannot wear transparent clothes. We cannot wear clothes of the opposite gender. So these are the commandments that uh, maintains the chastity and the harmony and the justice and peace in the society. So we may disagree with the way that they're implementing it, but we cannot disagree with the concept of modesty. That's interesting. It's how you make that example over here. You also now in another country. The whole point is we have enough problems here. Why are we, <laughs> why are we you know, if we took the majority of that money and spent it here, you have people that like Chicago, you know, the, you you know, they called uh, Chicago Chirac. <laughs> oh, really? <Okay. laughs> yeah, you, you heard that term? <laughs> yeah, perhaps. Yeah, because of so much violence and shootings and whatnot. You have uh, places like Detroit, 
um, and other places that imagine if we took that money and we opened up youth centers, we made more park, we uh, increased the level for education. Mm -hmm. Imagine if that money was taken, invested in some of these urban areas and other places around the cities. Imagine, you know, how much more in healthcare and all. The, imagine how much more good yeah. can be done. Two trillion dollars. My taxpaying dollars and your taxpaying dollars and their taxpaying dollars that we have spent up there in Afghanistan, right? You know, there is a literally thousands, if not millions of people in this country who are in the student debt. They cannot purchase cars. They cannot purchase homes. They are in a vicious cycle. We could have used that money right over here for the education of our youth, our children and, and our families. You know, all of this wastage, uh, close to like 10 trillion dollars in the war in Afghanistan in different places. So there's precious money that we should be using over here. How many single mother homes, how many homes uh, that are, people don't have homes, they're living in cardboard boxes. Just look at LA, you look at, you know, Chicago, look at these major cities where people are homeless, right? Imagine yeah. how many people we can give homes, uh, take care of, how many people give jobs so they can have homes, how many people that money can go ahead and be spent wisely, properly, if put back here. It's not just the money part, it's the loss of lives, loss of suffering. Uh, that's a whole different... Uh, no, but we have to touch yeah. upon it. I more than one million people, people say three million, four million, five million, just in Iraq, of the embargo and the drone missiles and the occupation and this, you know, mega bombs. Same thing, one million people, innocent people in Afghanistan. You mentioned yeah. something about the 51st state. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's really important. Some of us may be surprised to find out that, you know, how come uh, you U.S. is pulling out of Afghanistan? We may, <laughs> you know, for us Americans, we think that, you know, Afghanistan is part of the U.S. <laughs> it's not the 51st state of the U.S., no. We were uninvited guests in Afghanistan. You know, Afghanistan is, uh, what do you call it? It's called as the graveyard of the empires. The Mongols came. To rule Afghanistan, they were defeated. Uh, the Mughals came to rule Afghanistan, they were defeated. The British, three times in history, they wanted to rule Afghanistan, they were kicked out. Russia recently, and US right now, is the opium trade. All of us, we know, drug problem is a problem, unfortunately, that is plaguing many parts of the world, especially the Western countries. Afghanistan, before the Taliban came to power in 1996, they used to have like 95% of the opium trade. I, it was from Afghanistan. After the Taliban came to power in 1996 all the way to 2001, they eradicated the opium problem and the narcotic problem. So one of the statements that uh, they made when they came to power now is that we want to make Afghanistan narcotic free. That's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. But after they were kicked out by our forces in 2001, again the opium trade, thanks to the blessings of the US, it went up again, 95%. That's destroying humanity, our youth, our children. I'm not saying that, you know, that they're angels, no. We, but we have to look at the realities. Opium trade and the narcotics and the drug problem. At least they want to solve it. We don't have a solution over here. We, we have so many issues happening and I, I see what you said. I mean, it's just now going, you had drone attacks, you know, happening over there. You've had innocent people uh, dying, innocent children. And it's just interesting. Where were you like for 20 years? Someone like um, Angelina Jolie. And you had, I had a guest on the other day who was talking about that money that wasn't spent in Afghanistan. That went into people's, that actually came back here. He was talking. Yeah, and, and the only winners, I would say, it's not the Afghan people, it's not the, you know, American people. It is the war machines. All of these big corporations, all of these production plants, big CEOs, yeah. they were making money out of these wars. So we have to realize that it is coming from my and your taxpaying dollars. Mm -hmm. um, have you heard the name of Sister Yvonne Ridley? Yeah, yeah, I just <laughs> had, her, had her on the program, yes. Yes, yes. So interesting, right? We can demonize the uh, Taliban and the, and the Afghanistan all we want. Yes, they're not perfect. We're not here to support them. Yvonne Ridley, way back about 20 or so years ago, she went to Afghanistan for reporting and she got captured by the Taliban. And she was there for a few months or so. 
and she became really afraid and she w- she was abusing them and spitting at them with a smile the taliban told her you know why are you behaving like this uh, with us uh, you are our guest we want to take make the best treatment of you she was given a royal treatment and she was freed she went back to uk england and there of her own choice she embraced the faith of islam because of the behavior of the taliban one important uh, action item for all of us is chapter 49 of the quran verse number 6 that encourages and commands every single one of us the believers to investigate the news and we should know that things are really fluid up there we cannot make any conclusions when the things are fluid and we have to take everything with a grain of salt uh, because you know obviously uh, the us lost the war okay this is just granted four presidents right uh, involved in this war 2 trillion dollars 20 years we lost the war right it's a hard pill to solve for some people losers demonize the winners this is just a fact of war people demonize each other in the war so we have to take the news with a grain of salt coming from both sides i'm not just saying from the us coming from both sides so we have to watch neutral news al jazeera for example or bbc for example so we have to in, uh, uh, expand our scope of the news media the news channels and the social media number 2 is important we when we look into the realities of the ground what are the women in afghanistan what are they saying what are they doing so npr they did a report in which they they had a live interview with a journalist up there and that journalist they were asked the question what do you see on the street are the women up there what are they doing do you see them and he reported back to npr saying that you know what there are women the roaming around there is a coffee shop i can see women there they're socializing up there and then when you see this uh, news anchor you know there is this lady afghan news executive says we thought we would be shut down by now so this lady a muslim lady she's an anchor person right she's an anchor person and she's saying that you know i am there live every day having the news and taliban has not shut me down and she is not the only person there are many many ladies like that they are not perfect but we have to know that there there is more to what our media is saying so we as humans an action item is investigate more look into the other channels other uh, you know non american channels i would say uh, talk to muslims talk to muslim scholars but the most important thing is do not judge islam by the actions of some people out there right islam is perfect sharia is perfect the quran is perfect the noble example of muhammad peace be upon him is perfect so do not judge that which is perfect by the actions on the ground of those individuals who are not perfect so i would like to invite our guest to read the quran which is the source of islam uh, that's how you can find out that what islam stands for look into the noble life of prophet muhammad peace be upon him you will be amazed to find out how he brought unity to humanity how he eradicated racism how he eradicated poverty how he uplifted women equal to men in the eyes of god yes different responsibilities but equality of reward how he uh, brought morality how he made a society a sober society right no one was drinking and no one was taking drugs just imagine a society like that in our time so that is the beauty of islam that's the guidance of islam and we invite you to study islam So now just really quickly for the people out there who now they use this as a pretext, you know, to want to still invade a country or countries and they say, look, well these are the guys, you know, because the countries are invaded because of 9/11 and it's a harboring place for terrorists. So under this pretext, this is why they feel they should be there or they're trying to just go ahead and use inflammatory language to get people riled up to kind of get some other country over there get somebody over there to get back to square one there is a professor in the in the chicago campus here in the university of chicago and he wrote a book called dying to win he did a 25 year study on terrorism and his main conclusion is that it's not uh, islam or the quran uh, or the muslim culture uh that is making people extremist up there it is the us occupation as dr uh, pape robert pape right yes exactly 
so non muslim scholars who are specialist in this field they are saying that it is our own doing that we are making terrorist you know they were some drone missile operators they came on the news and they said you know what uh, 95 per 90% actually of our drones they hit the wrong target they are hitting women and children and uh, how homes and farmers and parties and people are dying children and women and you know so they said that you know we are creating the terrorist so the best thing that we can do is you know quran says in chapter 5 verse number 32 that saving one life is like saving all of humanity taking one life is taking the life of all of humanity islam says that every life is precious may that be women and children and black and white and and different religions islam and uh, i mean muslims and christian all life is precious in islam that means we as humans we have to be equal and uh, just when we deal with other people mm -hmm. so if we behave with that mindset inshallah god willing there would be justice in the world racism would be eradicated uh, women would be uplifted they would not be objectified humanity would be an ideal humanity with uh, with allah's mercy and guidance you know do not blindly follow the media you know media has their own agenda they want to have more sponsors they want to have more business so they want to just uh, show that news that is going to bring the most viewers the news may be true there may be small truth to it but they will just you know spin uh, the truth so it's important for us a prime example would be invasion of iraq with the pretext of weapons of mass destruction and now we found out now uh, that he has to come on the tv he has to apologize that you know what uh, we made a mistake weapons of mass destruction in 2003 when us invaded iraq with the false pretext that's a beautiful example that was a lie based on a clear lie 1 million people who's going to come on their back their families. now on their back now yes of the us and the uk and the 54 allies who supported them these muslims died and look at the power of the media mm. and all these experts and everybody coming together mm. and they were able to come together and orchestrate this this invasion to come in and kill all these people look at that ben shapiro if you're listening this yeah. i want you to do a show on this how the us is at fault and who was the president up there right it was bush a conservative president a, a, a supporter that ben shapiro supports him come on if you are truthful if you are jew if you are a bible believer you have to have the guts to come and say us was wrong we need to compensate them right every family should get millions and millions of dollars from your tax paying dollars because you supported a wall like that so at the end of the day my dear friends my dear viewers right by the ed just as discussing about afghanistan in the us and the war and all of that is not enough we have to look at the higher the greater purpose that our our creator has given to us and that purpose is uh, that we should be worshiping the creator we should be a uh, just to people good to the neighbors good to parents you know follow the laws and allah has promised in the quran chapter number 2 verse number 25 if a person has the right belief means not worshiping a human an idol an animal but worshiping only the creator and doing good deeds the way our allah has mentioned in the quran and through the example of muhammad peace be upon him right belief and doing good deeds allah promises the people eternal paradise so that's where you and me and all of us we want to go so we need to make sure that by following god's guidance as present in the last testament which came through muhammad peace be upon him that is the way for our salvation and i hope and pray that may god has mercy on us may god unite us may god Amen. empower us uh, may god uh, help us to defeat islamophobia anti-semitism xenophobia racism anything out there and that is possible when we wake up when we realize there is a creator there is a last testament the quran example of muhammad peace be upon him and that's the way for having the best in this world inshallah god willing paradise in the hereafter a lot to think about we got the message <laughs> hopefully get it to angelina and joli benny shapiro and others out there the conservative voices people out there we got a lot in common and uh, other things that we can build on and i hope that uh, people can benefit from some of this uh, some of the things that we've just discussed thank you very much dr bill welcome assalamu alaikum